Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. And we're so happy that you've joined us today online. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each Sabbath for a new program where we get to sing different songs, we learn about God in a different way. And today we have something very fun, an activity, very fun activity that we're going to play with you guys. And I'm going to invite mom and dad to get ready. Or if you are watching with grandma or grandpa or aunts and uncles, whoever is an adult with you, call them up. Get them ready because we are going to need their assistance to play a little something today in our theme of the day. Now, uh, last week we asked you guys to write letters to us. And we were going to read those letters on the air. And I'm happy that three kids, with the assistance of mom and dad, wrote to us. And I'm going to read those notes to you guys now. So, Will is watching us right now. And uh, he sent us a note. Mom sent us a note for Will. And here's what it says. Our family is all home together. And Will has been building, playing with Legos doing crafts and playing outside in the backyard, as well as helping out his baby sister, Mia. I don't know if you guys remember seeing Mia here at church. So tiny, she's probably grown a little bit now, and he's helping Mia at home. That's so great, Will. Will really misses seeing all the teachers and friends at church. We enjoy watching all the programs online, and it brings a big smile to his face when Miss Teresa say his name as she welcome all the kids. We pray that everyone stays healthy and that we will see each other again soon. Thank you, Will's family, for all the love and thank you for writing us a note. We miss you and we hope that all this goes away soon and we can worship God here at home. Will, thank you for the lovely note. All right, our next note comes from far away. Do you guys remember Francisco and Frederico? Yes? Well, guess where they are? They are in Mexico. However, they tune in and they watch our program every Sabbath. And they ask mom to, we want to go to Sabbath, Sabbath school. And here is what mom wrote. Our family is so appreciative of Kids Connection team. Every week, the boys, that is Francisco and Frederico, they ask, can we go to Sabbath school? That's so cool. And I bet that they're watching right now. Francisco, Frederico, I hope that God is keeping you safe in Mexico where you are along with your family. We can't wait to see you guys back here. Thank you, Mom, for writing this, uh, this note. And we appreciate all the love that you shared with us. Now, our third note comes from JR and Seth. And here is what Seth wrote with the help of mom. We miss going to church every Sabbath and hanging out with all the other kids. We haven't been able to go to daycare, but our parents are working really hard to keep us busy even though they're both working from home. Last week, I, this is Seth, I turned two years old. Happy birthday, Seth! Seth turned two, congratulations! Whoa, this is amazing. We can't wait to see you again so we can give you a nice hug and wish you a happy birthday. So he continues by saying, I turned two years old and we even camped in our backyard in a big red tent, red tent. It was so much fun. Every night we pray that everyone who is sick feels better and that God takes care of everyone. See you guys soon, JR and Seth. JR and Seth, we miss you guys too. Thank you so much for writing us the note. We, we love you and we want to see you guys very soon here at Kids Connection. Now, if you want to send us a note and if you want us to read your note to your friends or to, our teacher, to your teachers or to us here at Kids Connection or to KID. Speaking of KID, I want to share something about KID happening later today. Go ahead, send us an email. The email is it's VD kidsconnection at gmail.com VD stands for Vallejo Drive so it's VD kidsconnection at gmail.com 
Send us an email. I need your names and I need that new little note. We will read your note uh, on the air on the next program. And thank you so much for the three, uh, for Will, for Francisco and Frederico from Mexico and from JR and Seth who wrote us this little note. Now, later I'm going to share something about what's happening with Kid today, 7, this afternoon, and how you can get involved and you can tell us what is going to happen next Sabbath, okay? So it's coming up. But for now, I'm going to invite you guys to welcome to Kids Connection by standing up and singing our song of the day. You know why? Because I want you guys not to worry. Don't worry about a thing. Whoa, that was a fun song. Remember when we sang that song here at Kids Connection? And we also sang that song right here in this room doing our VBS not long ago. Wasn't that great? I hope you guys enjoy singing the song of the day. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. Thank you for another Kids Connection that is on the way. We ask that you bless us. Bless each kid that are watching this program at home right now, whatever they are. Be with them and help us learn a little bit about, about you and connect with you a little bit more today. Thank you for being our God, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, let's go ahead and listen to our missionary story. 
Last week, we talked about a boy that really enjoyed soccer. Do you remember that? I hope you do, because today we're going to talk about some youth and what they are doing to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, here at Kids Connection, we have fun together. We have all the kids that come in and we play together. We play the games together. We sing songs together and we are sharing the love of Jesus. In other places of the world, we have some missionaries that they're also doing the same thing. However, they're doing it in a different way. Let's watch what the youth, missionaries youth, are doing in other places of the world and where our offering is going to help them continue to share the love of Jesus. Let's watch our missionary story. In the 1880s, Ellen White visited Oslo, Norway and preached at the Bethel Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, Oslo is one of Europe's most expensive cities, although it ranks high on quality of life. It's the center of the Norwegian economy and government. The Betel Church still operates at a prime location in the heart of the city. On Sabbath, you'll find a melting pot of cultures forming Sabbath school classes and then coming together for the main service. In this church, youth are a high priority. In 2017, a portion of your 13 Sabbath offering started a renovation project for a space specifically for youth outreach. The youth group in Oslo is very active and inclusive. Today, Alex and Marielle are asking church members to spread the word about upcoming events to any young person they know. There are universities scattered throughout Oslo, with many students hoping to make new friends. This group happily welcomes newcomers into the close-knit community. Events are scheduled throughout the week for the youth to connect with each other outside of church, too. I love the cabin trips that we have, <laughs> going skiing and hanging out together, because then you get to have like a lot of uh, like deep conversations together, too, with friends that you normally don't get the possibility to uh, in normal settings. I'm a very social being. I need people. <laughs> and. Uh, just a bunch of great guys and girls, good people to hang around with. On this Sabbath, they've planned a picnic in the park after church where they can socialize and get to know each other. For me, I don't always think about it as much as uh, it bring, you know, the youth group, more as uh, it's my friends, we want to go uh, hang out and then we can just like make, sort of make an arrangement and get together. Each Sabbath afternoon, the youth group from the Bethel Church joins young Adventists and their friends from all over Oslo for conversation, testimonies, and music. This gives them another opportunity to recharge spiritually and socially. Although this larger community benefits from spending time together, there are many in Oslo who don't know Jesus. The challenges of working in such a large urban area can be discouraging. Norway is a very secular country, so uh, of course it makes it more difficult for mission workers telling people about the gospel because everyone has sort of heard about it and they have in, in a way made their own opinion about it, so it makes it very difficult to show them how good it really is. The young people in Oslo ask Adventists around the world to join them in prayer. We need prayer for trying to have the best kind of environment for people to get more involved with God and each other. So pray for some spiritual guidance, help us to be more or better at meeting people and uh, show others that we are Christians. Please pray for this group in Norway and thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering that is helping this group reach more young people. Whoa, that was a great story. And it's incredible how they are sharing Jesus' love and God's love with those people. And they are connecting. Did you see that? How they are connecting with outside activities and they're doing things and events 
just like we did here at Kids Connection, they are connecting with people who they can share the love of Jesus. And our offering is going to help them to continue to uh, share the love of Jesus and love of God with other people. Thank you for your offering. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and click on the link above and where you, mom and dad can donate to the missionaries for today's offering. Thank you. Now, today I want to share something very, very fun with you. I'm going to invite my daughter, Lanessa, to come out here today. Lanessa, uh, always, every now and then, she helps me with explaining a few things. So, uh, Lanessa, come on up here. And we're going to ask you boys and girls, hello. Now, earlier today, I asked that mom and dad or an adult or whoever is with you at home, be ready because we want to, we want your help so we can explain and, and help the kids understand something. Now, before we get to that, let me just um, show you guys something. Um, Lanessa, can you do me a favor? Here. Can you turn around this way? And I think it's right here. Yes. So now, Lanessa, I'm going to ask you to cross your arms in front of your, of your chest. Yes, like that. Thank you. Now, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? Don't bend your knees. Don't bend your knees. I'm going to ask you to fall back, and I'm going to catch you on a count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that was scary, wasn't it? Yes, yes! <laughs> that was scary. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it on this side now. Ready? Here we go. Here's Lanessa. Here I am. Lanessa, I am very, very far away from you. Now, go ahead and close your eyes. Eyes closed and fall back. Whoa! <laughs> that was scary again. Whoa, that was scary. However, was that fun? Uh, kind of fun, maybe a little bit scary. Right, it was a little bit scary. Yes, and, and but however, she fell back with her eyes closed. And why did you fall back with your eyes closed? She fell back with her eyes closed because she trusts me. Now, I'm going to ask you to ask mom, dad, uncle, or aunt, grandma, or grandpa, or whoever you are watching this with at home. Ask them to do the same thing. I'm going to show you one more time, okay? Here it is. Lanessa is right here, okay? I'm going to take one step back, one step back. Now, I'm going to ask her to fall. Mom and dad... Are you guys helping the kids at home? Yes? Okay. So I'm going to give you a little more time for you to get ready. And we're going to do this together. I'm going to do it here. And you guys are going to do it at home. Ready? I'm going to get ready right behind Lanessa. Lanessa, close your eyes. Kids, close your eyes at home. On a count of three, we're all going to fall back. Mom and dad and someone is going to catch you. Don't have your sister or your brother or any little one catch you behind. Make sure that it's an adult to play this game, okay? Make sure that it's an adult. So, Renessa, parents, everyone ready at home? Here we count. Here we go. On a count of three. One, two, three, fall. Whoa! Again. I hope that you guys got to fall at home and someone to you. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? All right. So, you guys get to do it again. Okay? You get to do it again. And I'm going to thank Renessa for joining us, for uh, helping us demonstrate. Now, why did you fall back? Why did Lanessa fall back? Do you know who was behind you? Huh? Do you know that, did you know that this person was actually going to catch you? Lanessa, did you know that I was going to catch you? But yet you fell back because Lanessa trust, trust me. And her trust made, helped her close her eyes, cross her arms, and fall back. And because of that trust, I was able to catch her and not let her down because she knew and she knows that her father 
I will not do something to hurt her and I will always protect her. Lanessa, I want you to bring our new family member here uh, from you right now. I'm gonna show you guys something and I wanna explain why I'm showing this to you, okay? So Lanessa is gonna bring someone here to me and I'm gonna show you guys, um, um, I'm gonna introduce you to someone if you haven't met her yet. Thank you. Hello, say hello to Rosie. Yes, Rosie is our very energetic puppy. She is three months old and she's a multi -poo. Look at, look at her. She's so cute. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Yes, 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 yes. She has a little, a little, a little uh, a tag, name tag here that says Rosie with our phone number in the back. Now, Rosie is three and a half months old. Excuse me. She's three months old. We have her for two weeks now. She's very energetic. She loves to play around the house. She loves chasing Lanessa. She loves chasing a ball and she loves pulling a little a little bone and 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 rustling with a with a rug where's that where's that the, the the rope that we just got her we just got her a new rope now because she loves to play with all the toys that we gave her let me show you thank you here it is look at look at this toy come on rosie look at the toy look at look at her look at her see that see, see that you see you see how she's trying to catch oh she got it ha 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 she she got her rope and this is one of the toys that she plays with now why am i showing you rosie here today well first of all i want you to see our little pup look at her oh isn't she cute she's so cute i know and she's looking at lanessa behind the camera here but i'm showing you rosie today because i want to explain you something Rosie doesn't know anything. She can't cook. She cannot clean the house. She can't go outside by herself because the doors are closed. She needs someone to care for her. No. With only two weeks, yes, Rosie, with only two weeks, we learn how to love this little puppy and she became a part of our family and what I want you guys to understand something that has to do with our lesson today is that Rosie she doesn't worry about anything Rosie doesn't worry that she can't she doesn't she can't go outside by herself she she doesn't care where her food is coming from. Rosie doesn't worry about anything at all. Do you know why? Because Rosie has us. She has me, she has Lanessa, she has Larissa, and she has mom to take care of her. And because of that, she doesn't have to worry about where her food is coming from, where the water is coming from, she doesn't have to worry that she needs to take a bath by herself. We give her a bath. We play with her. We take her for walks because we love Rosie. The same way that Lanessa felt back and I caught her and she didn't worry about that she was going to fall. The same way Rosie trusts us that we are going to take care of her. Right, Rosie? Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. Now, what does this have to do with our lesson today? Well, today in our classroom, we are going to learn how to trust someone. We're going to learn, we're going to hear a story about trusting God. And when we trust God and we put everything in His hands, we actually don't have to worry about anything. Just like our song of, of the day, don't worry about a thing. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you guys to join us again singing our song of the day, don't worry about a thing. While me and Rosie here are going to be singing right here at Kids Connection. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. Thank you for coming, Rosie. Hi guys, I'm Teacher Kelly, 
And we're going to play a game throughout the lesson today. So you're gonna need to grab a paper and a pencil. And I'm gonna tell the story out on my hammock today. We need a place where we can relax and be still. Even though we have more time at home and we're not commuting and running around places, we need a place to be still and let God speak to us. We have to put God first. Sometimes life can be hectic and chaotic and, and sometimes crazy. So we have to figure out where does God fit in all of this? Okay, we're gonna play a little game. You need to go grab a paper and a pencil and you're gonna write down these six words. They're adverbs. Do you know what an adverb is? We all know that adjectives are what describe a noun. An adverb is something that describes the verb, like talking quietly. Quietly is describing talking, which is the verb. Um, running quickly. Quickly is describing the verb running. So we're going to write these six adverbs down. Sacrificially habitually, secretly, generously, cheerfully, and eternally. So there should be six. Habitually, sacrificially, eternally, secretly, cheerfully, generously. And you're gonna find these words in the texts or charades that our friends from primary are going to act out or read for us. You can be the first person to post your answers on the Sabbath School Families at Vallejo Drive Facebook page. Please ask your parents for help. Okay, so your paper should look something like this. We have the six adverbs on the one side now I'm going to give you the names of the participants so you can write them in any order and then what you're going to do is match them up. So if you don't catch the names this time around, I'll make sure to say it before they do their part again, okay? So we have Natalie, Dylan, Ryan, Cody, Christian, and Lena. After one of the kids presents their charade, or their text from the Bible, you're gonna match it up. For just for example, you would do like sacrificially to Dylan, for example. And then after you see all of that, you have to figure out what verb are these adverbs describing. So for the bonus question, write it down here. What verb? What verb are these adverbs describing? Remember to submit your paper, take a picture of it, okay? So we're gonna learn about how God takes care of our needs when we put him first. Okay, so now for our first video from our primary friend, Dylan, is going to act out one of the adverbs. And so you're gonna match his name to the adverb that you think he is acting out. Hey, thanks Dylan for always helping out. So we're spending some time in Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how we're talking about how they put God first. They stood up for God and refuse some things that this King Nebuchadnezzar was trying to force them to do. So when King Nebuchadnezzar took over, he didn't just take people's things, he took people. He wanted to find the strong and good looking men who were wise and could grow up and be in his palace. So one of the things the King Nebuchadnezzar did was force them to eat their food and rich drink. and. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel didn't feel comfortable knowing they were breaking God's laws, so they refused to eat it. But the people who were working for the king said, you can't refuse this. Come on, just give us 10 days. 
and see what happens. So instead of eating the pork and rich meats that the Bible tells us we shouldn't be eating and drinking all that wine, they said something like, let's just have vegetables and water. We'll eat that and see what happens in 10 days. And truly, the king's men were very scared. Okay, our next primary friend is Ryan. He's going to read a text for us that will tell us a clue for the next adverb. We're going to draw a line from Ryan's name to the next one. I will be reading Luke 21, 1 to 4. Jesus looked around and saw rich men dropping their gifts in the temple treasury, and he also saw a very poor widow dropping in two little copper coins. He said, I will tell you that this poor widow put in more than all the others, for the others offered their gifts from what they had to spare of their riches, but she, as poor as she is, gave all that she had to live on. Thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> so let's pretend that I just lost my job and all I have is 20 bucks. But let's pretend I live with my parents so I don't have to pay rent, but I do have a car, I gotta pay insurance, I gotta pay gas, I gotta buy groceries to help out. But all I have is $20. So we know that for every $10, $1 is 10%. So I have $20 here. So I have to give $2 to tithe for God, which we have to do anyway. So I'm only left with $18. $18 is less than $20. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. When we have very little money and we still pay tithe, money shows up in places we weren't expecting. That's the blessings from God when we do our part to give to him what is his. So at the end of 10 days, they had to go see the king. And guess what? These men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were 10 times smarter and stronger than all the rest. So like Daniel and these guys, let's make God number one and God will provide the rest. All right, Christian, you're next. Hey, thanks, Christian. It's good to see you. Putting God first is not always easy, but as we learn about God and spend time with God, it becomes easier to prioritize God. And God promises us, when we do all these things, when we put him first, Matthew 6.33 says, all other things we need will be given to us. The thing we should want most is God's kingdom and doing what God, God wants. And then the rest, God provides. It doesn't mean we're gonna be able to escape hard times or sicknesses. You know, we all live in a sinful world. We can't escape it, but God will always be there for us. And the Bible tells us that our Heavenly Father takes care of the birds. And how much more important are we than the birds? Just as the birds find food each day, God will be with us and meet our needs. Our next primary friend is Lena. Lena, great to see you. Thank you for participating with us. Hi, church. 1 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. <laughs> yep, Lena, on the first day of every week, you gotta make it a habit. Nothing on earth is stable. Only God is stable in our life. Look at what's happened to us now. Dentists and surgeons who are making the most money don't have a job. You know, people who thought they had job security because there was a shortage of, of nurses, for example. There's not enough work for them in the hospitals because nobody's going in to get surgeries that aren't emergencies. Only, we can only rely on God. Next up, Natalie. Did you know Natalie does live Facebook Bible studies in Spanish? Great job, Natalie. 
I'm going to be reading Matthew 6, 19-21. Do not store up riches for yourselves here on earth, where moths and rust destroy and robbers break in and steal. Instead, store up riches for yourself in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy and robbers cannot break in and steal. For your heart will always be where your riches are. Natalie read it. Store your treasures up in heaven, because that's eternal. This earth, as we know it, is not. And all of our stuff here means nothing when we think of the kingdom of God. Okay, now Cody, he's going to help us figure out if we match them all up correctly. Okay, thanks, Cody. We don't prioritize God so that he will take care of us. We prioritize God because he always takes care of us. But why should we give to God? Doesn't he already own everything? We give to God out of obedience. We, when God gave the laws of Moses, he commanded his people to give one-tenth of the things to God first. This would be a reminder of God's blessings, but also provide for the tabernacle and the temple needs and the priests, like today, for our church. Of course, God doesn't really need our money. We give to God because of our gratitude, our thankfulness for him, and so that his church will grow. Every good gift comes from God. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Only God is stable, and all good things come from God. Okay, so what verb were all of these adverbs describing? That's the bonus question. We should have an attitude of thankfulness to give back to God. If we give our money or things because we feel like we have to, perhaps the problem isn't with our money, but our hearts. Our attitude is an indication of what's important to us. Money isn't that important because God will provide. And that's why it's important to find a spot in a quiet time to spend time and pray to God, even more so than just before you go to bed, before every meal. Because if we're spending all of our free time playing video games or watching TV or whatever we're doing, we're not going to find it important to give. The more we spend time on something, the more we grow to love that thing. But let's not love things. Not things of this earth that will, that will just be destroyed. But let's love people. Let's love God. So we have to spend time with him. Remember, last week we learned that it's not wrong to have or even want things. But we have to make sure those things don't become more important to us than God is. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us during this time, and we know that you will prepare a place for us in heaven. Please help us to remember to prioritize you in all ways, that we can trust that you will meet our needs, especially when we're feeling um, like you're not there. Um, thank you for dying on the cross for us and saving us from this world, and please be with all of the primary students. lights on this earth for you, for others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If any of you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Call the church, text a teacher if you have our numbers, go to the Facebook page, reach out. We're here for you. Okay, now you go find your quiet spot. Goodbye.